In our study of growth models so far, we started with linear. Um, and a linear growth model had a special property. And that property was that uh, the rate of change occurred by a constant numbered amount. Another type of growth model is an exponential growth model. And for an exponential growth model, you can see right away that we're not growing by a constant amount. We start by growing really small, and then as time goes on, we grow more and more and more. However, it's doing this in a very predictable way. For exponential functions, the defining characteristic is that our rate of change is a constant percentage growth. So anytime that we see a percentage growth, we are in exponential growth model territory. Now for our linear equations, there was a general formula that we could use and it was P equals A plus B times N, where A was our starting value and B was our rate of change. N was how we were measuring things and P was whatever it was we were measuring. Uh, for an exponential equation, there's also a general growth model that we can use and it looks like this. P is equal to A times one plus R to the nth power. In this case, A is just like it was up here. Our A value is our starting value. So however we define what that starting value is gonna be, that's gonna be our A value. The R is that percent rate of change. Right, that's the defining characteristic of an exponential function. And so we need to make sure that we have what that R value is. Now, we are not, we can't put percentages into formulas. It's really important that any time that you have that percentage given to you as a rate of change, that you put it into decimal form. Now, quick reminder about how to do that. Let's say that we started with something that was like a 25% growth rate. If I wanted to write this in its decimal form, I can either times, or sorry, not times, but divide rather. Per cent means per 100. So I can divide by 100 on your calculator. And 25 divided by 100 is going to give me 0.25. So the decimal form of 25% is 0.25. You can also move the decimal two places to the left. So here, if I have 25%, the decimal is at the end in a, this number. So if I move it two places to the left, that's the same as dividing by 100, and I get 0.25. Let's suppose that we have something like this, 3.2%. Um, if I want to write it in its decimal form, I can either divide it by 100, or I can move the decimal two places to the left. Now, if you notice, there is no, there's only one place and then it's kind of blank. We have to put a zero there because this is where the decimal place is. So 3.2% is 0 0.032 when we move the decimal two places to the left. If we have something like 150%, right? So something's growing really, really fast. Still same thing. We can divide by 100 or we can move the decimal two places to the left. It's always at the end if you don't see one, one, two, that gets me 1.5. Generally, our percentages are going to be less than one, but if we're more than 100%, then we're going to be more than one here in our value answer. So this is some, a step that you'll have to take every single time as you do these problems because the formula requires the decimal version of the percentage, and they're usually gonna give you that value when it's in percentage form. Um, all right, so let's take a look 
at some examples in the next video of how to use this formula moving forward.